from the sanctuary of the New Life Deliverance Worship Center. You're watching Deliverance Now with Dr. Bonte DeZore. Psalm 121 and verse 1 and verse 2. If you have it, say, I have it. I have it. It says, I will lift up my eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. Come on, church, let's read, let's read those two verses as a family. <clears throat> I will lift up my eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. Now your turn. You read it to me. I will lift up my eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. Amen. Amen. The subject today is help is on the way. Hallelujah. I know help is here for some of you, but for some of you, you're waiting on the help to arrive. And uh, this is a rainbow word, so I guarantee it's going to bless your spirit. But look at your neighbor just to encourage them, because they might be discouraged. You don't know what they went through to get to church today, and just tell them help is on the way. Help is on the way. Now look at the other neighbor the one with the attitude and tell them, that's for you too. Help is on the way. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, what an opportunity, God, to be in your presence. You're an awesome God, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You are majestic. You are wonderful. You are forgiving. You are loving. You are kind. You are wise. You are powerful. You're, om you're omniscient, Lord. Even before a word is formed on our lips, you know it all together. You know it's our downsitting and our uprising, even our thoughts, God. Your, the, your thoughts toward us, Lord, are even more than the sands of the sea. Thank you, Lord. you have engraved us in the palm of your hand. You have loved us with an everlasting love. Yeah. You have yeah. redeemed us. You have saved us. You have delivered us. You have encouraged us. You have showed up in our lives, God. When people were walking out, you walked in. You yeah. have blessed us. You have restored us. You have healed us. You have delivered us, God. You've taken us from victory to victory, from glory to glory, from faith to faith. We love you today, God. Yeah. And we ask, Lord God, that you take these words, Lord, that David wrote so many years ago, and you make it applicable and relevant to our lives, that you impact this text into our spirit, so when we leave this place, we'll leave jumping and shouting and dancing, how great is our God, we love you, God, we thank you for the forgiveness of sins, we thank you for the blood of Jesus, we thank you for the word of God, we thank you for the cross, we thank you for your son, and we thank you, God, for this great place, New Life Deliverance Worship Center, where your spirit reigns and has freedom, in Jesus' name we pray. And if you're in agreement with that, say amen. Amen. Or maybe seated in God's house. All of us know Christian cliches. All of us have heard them. And it's sad to say that a lot of Christian cliches that we hear are not in the Bible. Let me give you an example. Cleanliness is next to godliness. That is not in the Bible. In fact, personally, some of the freakiest, some of the kinkiest, some of the most deviant people that I know are clean. But they ain't godly. Cleanliness, cleanliness is not next to godliness. People have taken the scriptures out of the book of Leviticus to imply that, but that's not what the Bible teaches. Some people will tell you that money is the root of all evil. That's not true. The Bible doesn't say that. The Bible says it's the love of money that's the root of all evil. The Bible says that many have departed from the faith trying to be rich. Trying to be rich and pursuing the things of the world. So the truth is, there's nothing wrong with having things. There's, it's only wrong when things have you. Amen. Amen. And for the rest of you who don't know things, y'all can just bring it to my house. I'll let you know what <laughs> So another thing that I hear people say all the time, they say that the Lord will not put on you more than you can bear. Well, you can't find that in the Bible. People say that. It's a Christian cliche. It sounds spiritual. We want it to be true. But the fact of the matter is, it's not in the Holy Scriptures. And if it's not in the Holy Scriptures, it has to be rejected. Amen? Amen? The Scripture that people use to say that, they use 1 Corinthians chapter 10. And they take it out of context because the Bible says this in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 13. It says, There hath no temptation that has overtaken us, but such is common to man. But God is faithful who will with the temptation make a way for you to escape that you may be able to bear it. What is that saying? It's saying that whatever temptation comes on you to do that thing that you have no business doing, God will make a way for you to get out of there. And it's up to you whether you choose to flee or whether you choose 
to stay. Amen. But the truth is, is God will allow things to come on you that are more than you can bear. Do you know why? Because if you can always bear the things that come onto your life, then you will never call upon the name of Jesus. It was a time in my life that I was in a place and I was in a situation that I could not see a way out, that the burden was too far, heavy for me to tote, that I cried out to the Lord and he inclined his ear unto me and he heard my cry and he delivered me. Some of you right now, you would not be in church if you could bear the burden. You would not be in church if you could bear the load. In fact, you were bearing the load up into a point, but when it got too heavy on your life, you began to cry out to the name of Jesus, and you began to look for a good church home where you can plant, where you can serve, where you can grow in the things of God, because you came to the realization that you could not do this yourself, that you needed God to help you. Another thing that people say, which is not true, they'll tell you that God helps those that help themselves. But the truth is, that is not in the Bible. God helps those who can't help themselves. My Bible tells me that God is a father to the fatherless, he's hope to the hopeless, and he's help to the helpless. Because there was a time in my life that I could not help myself. There was a time in my life where I was beat up from the feet up, I was messed up from the chest up, I was tore up from the floor up, I was so low that I looked up and I seen bottom, and I could not get my way out of it. I tried the N.A., I tried the S.A., I tried the A.A., I even tried the A.K., and nothing could help me. Somebody get y'all crazy here. You know what I'm talking about. None of it could not help me. I tried the 12-step, I tried the two-step, I tried the chicken dance, I tried the tootsie roll, I you name it, I tried it, and it could not help me. I went to the shrinks, I went to the psychiatrists, they could not fix me. But when I called on the name of Jesus, everything was going to turn around my life. So it's not true that God helps those who help themselves. The truth is, is that God helps those who can't help themselves. God helps those who don't see the way out. God can help those who don't have the answers. God can help those who don't see any kind of resolution to the problem that they're in. And they just can't. They've gotten to the place where they can only cry out to his name. In other words, the people can't help them. Money can't help them. Opportunities can't help them. People laying hands on them can't help them. They only need Jesus to step in because they understand they've gotten to a place in their life that if it had not been for the Lord on their side, where would they be? I'm just wondering if there's somebody in here that can say that they were in a place that they did not know how they were going to get out. And if it had not been for the Lord, you would have died. If it had not been for the Lord, you would have been consumed. Somebody give God praise in this See, I know the spiritual stuff. I'm the preacher. I think I do. So I know how to quote the word. I know how to speak in tongues. I know how to splash myself with oil where I look like a crystal kid. I know how to plead the blood. I know how to take authority over the devil. I understand my authority in Christ. I understand my identity in Jesus. But the truth of the matter is, I am absolutely nothing if God does not help me. In fact, church, I'll go back if God doesn't help me. Now, 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 for some of you think that you can make it without God, I'm just talking about me. I know me that if God is not helping me, I'll go back. If God is not helping me, I'll shoot it again, I'll poke it again, I'll smoke it again, I'll look at it again, I'll do it again, I'll drink it again, I'll shack up again, I'll steal again. If God does not help me, I understand that not only he helped me, but God is helping me. I submit to you today that you would not be in God's house if you did not need help. I submit to you today that you would not have came and drove in your car through the rain to God's house today unless you needed help. You are here today because you need help. You are here today because there are things that are going on in you. Notice I didn't say in your life. I said in you first. That's why you're here. In other words, the greatest battle isn't the enemy. The greatest battle is the enemy. And you came today because you need help. Some of you are in a place 
where your son is on drugs and you need help. Amen. Some of you are in a place where your daughter is pregnant and you need help. Some of you are facing prison time and you need help. Some of you are homeless and you need help. Some of you are helpless and you need help. Some of you don't know where to turn and where to go and you need help. Some of your marriages are on the brink of divorce and you need help. Some of your husbands are cheating on you and you need help. Some of you have been told that you have cancer and you need help. Some of you, your mind is really ravaged by the enemy and you need help. Some of you fell into pornography last night and you need help. Some of you are still in addiction and you need help. Some of you are still smoking crack and you need help. Some of you are saved today because you need help. You are here because you need help. And you are in the right place today. Somebody get God pregnant. They said I had cancer. I need your help, bro. My son told me he's gay. I need your help, bro. My daughter told me she was a lesbian. I need your help, bro. Oh, we got to be real up in here. I lost my job. I need help. I'm trying to be a good daddy. I need help. I'm trying to be a husband, but my wife keeps cussing me out. I'm trying to do everything right. I need help. I need help, God. I'm trying to launch a ministry. I need help. I'm trying to walk in my assignment. And I need help. I'm trying to fulfill my purpose. And I need help. I just got out of prison. And I don't have anywhere to go. And I need help, God. I need help, God. They told me I'd be on the island. I need help. They told me I had three weeks to live. I need help. I need help. They said I had AIDS. I need help. I need help. I can't stop looking at porn. I need help. I'm in God's house today because I need help. Because I need help. How many of you can say today I need help? I need help. I need God to help me. My finances are a wreck. I need help. I'm working by faith, but I need help. I need help. I don't know how I'm going to pay my bills. I need help. They're about to turn my power off. I need help. They put the eviction notice on my house, and I need help. Help me, God. Help me, God. Help me. Uh, there's a war going on the inside of me. I need help, God. I still lust, God. I need help. I still lust, God. I need help. I'm still bound, God. I need help. The cocaine keeps calling me, God. I need help. My friend, my old friends keep trying to pull me back into that lifestyle. I need help. I need help. I need help, God. I need help. See, that's the most profound prayer. The most profound prayer is not the King James prayer. The most profound prayer is not the King James prayer. The most profound prayer is when you lay on your face where it ain't a show. You ain't doing it for people to see you as spiritual. But you're laying on your face before God. And tears are streaming down both sides of your face. And these boogers are running all out your nose and snot all over the carpet. And your tie is all jacked up and your pet leg is all around your neck. And you're laying on your face before God. And you're saying, God, help me. 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 If you don't help me, I'll die. If you don't help me, I won't come out. If you don't help me, I'll be nothing. If you don't help me, I won't be delivered. If you don't help me, I won't be healed. If you don't help me, I won't be successful. I need you to help me, God. Help me, God. Help me, God. Help me, God. Hanging around knuckleheads all day at work. Help me, God. Help me, God. Help me, God. Help me walk in my purpose. Help me walk in the vision. Help me, Lord. 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 Can I be real here? Come on, man. Come on, Jesus. Sometimes, help don't come. Amen. Yeah, I just like that, bitch. Amen. Don't shout me down, really, man. Sometimes, Help doesn't come the way that we want it. Sometimes we think that help should just show up right then, right now. But the truth is, sometimes help might not be here, but that does not mean that help is not on the way. Sometimes you got to get thrown in the lion's den. Damn it. God, can't you keep me from the lion's den? Sometimes, Daniel, you've got to go in the lion's den. Sometimes, 
Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, in spite of your boldness, be it known to you, O king, we won't bow down and worship your God, even though your boldness is there, sometimes you got to throw in the fire. Sometimes Lazarus has to die. But Jesus, he's sick. If you go now, you can heal him. Jesus, I know he's sick, but I'm going to let him die. See, it's okay. It's okay to die if Jesus is on the way. Because he can raise you back up again. I talked to a brother the other day. He said he had a head-on collision with a truck. And they pronounced him dead on the scene. But you notice what I said? I was talking to a brother the other day. Help doesn't show up when we want and how we want and as quick as we want. But that does not mean that help is not on the way. I want you to be encouraged today because help is on the way. Blind Bartimaeus was on the roadside begging, crying out, but help was on the way. Even Jesus was crying out to God and said, if it be thy will, let this cup pass from me. And do you know what? The same heavens that ripped open in Matthew chapter 3, where God himself said, my, behold, my beloved son, in whom I'm well pleased. This same God that ripped open the clouds and said something then, in Garden of Gethsemane, God the Father didn't say anything. And Jesus Christ, even himself, when he was on the cross, he said, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? What do you do when heaven is silent? What do you do when the prayer works? What do you do when your faith ain't being manifested the way that you thought it was going to be manifested? What do you do when the preaching don't work and the oil don't work and you're pleading the blood and you're casting out demons and you're praising and you're worshiping and you're coming to church? What do you do if the preaching don't work? What do you do if the CDs don't work and the conferences don't work? What do you do? Just because help has it does not mean that help is not on the way. Look at your neighbor and tell him, be encouraged. Help is on the way. Blind Bartimaeus was on the roadside begging. Blind! But help was on the way. The man was possessed with demons cutting himself with stones out of his mind. Little did he know that help was on the way. Israel was bound for 400 years in slavery, crying out to God with everything that they had. Little did they know that God was raising up Moses because help was on the way. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, yeah, you got to go into the fiery furnace, but I'm going to show up in there with you as the fourth man in the fire because help is on the way. God will show up in the midst of your trouble. God will show up in the midst of your mess. God will show up in the hospital bed, in the hospital room. God will show up in the middle of a courtroom. God will show up on your behalf because help is on the way. I want you to be encouraged. Hold on because help is on the way. When Pastor, my car broke down. Hold on. Because help is on the way. I want you to be encouraged. Y'all on the front row, y'all get that anointed spit. Just get hitched. Just rub it on in. Because help is on the way. Help is on the way. I'm telling you today, I want you to be encouraged. No matter what you're going through. God might be, God not, might, he might not be answering you in the speed that you want him to answer you. But I want you to be encouraged. Because help is on the way. David says this. He says, I look my eyes to the hills. From whence come my help. He had his priorities together. He, he realized that his help came from the Lord. Yeah. He understood that even Israel might be facing a giant. That was all right because help was on the way. He said, I look my eyes to the hills. From whence come my help. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. Notice what he said. He said, my help coming. My help coming. My back might be up against the wall, 
but my help is coming. My situation might not be looking so good right now, but my help is coming. I remember we were doing this church. We were painting the ceiling. We had so much invested, so much time, and so much money invested. And we had this lift that somebody had let us borrow. And the, and the lift just broke right in the middle of the floor. And oil started flowing all the way down in the middle, of, the middle of this aisle, all the way down here. There was a big puddle of oil down here. And I came and I looked at it. And I was just so discouraged. And you know the Bible says that you'll reap if you don't faint. Y'all read that scripture before? And I remember telling the Lord. I got right here on this altar right here. And I told the Lord, I said, Lord, I don't care what the harvest is right now. I said, Lord, just keep it. Because I'm so discouraged. I'm so frustrated. I'm so aggravated. I'm so disappointed. God, you can just go ahead and keep the harvest. I'm done. I'm, I'm just going to lay down right here, God, and just pray. And whatever, God. But help was on the way. Because a brother came in and he said, Pastor, that's not a problem. I know how to fix that. That's all I did all my life, working on machinery. And before you know it, the machine was up and going again. I'm telling you what, God will send you help when you need help. God will come through. He is the friend that speaks closer than a brother. Somebody put your hands together for Jesus. Help is on the way for your marriage. Help is on the way for your healing. Help, will, help is on the way for your deliverance. Help is on the way for your encouragement. Help is on the way for your manifestation. Help is on the way for your breakthrough. Help is, help is on the way for your financial release. Help is on the way. Somebody raise the roof in this place to give God some praise. on the way. If you look through scripture, even Jesus Christ himself, they beat him, they spat on him, they, they hit him with reeds, they put a crown of thorn on his head, they mocked him, they ridiculed him, they smacked him, they snatched his beard, they put, they put him on a cross, they took a spear and they threw it into his side and after that they took him and put him in the bar of the tomb. But help was on the way. Because in three days, the Spirit of the living God snatched Jesus up out of the grave. And all power in heaven and earth was in his hand because help was on the way. All humanity fought, had fallen into sin when Adam rebelled against God. And all humanity was considered deplorable in the eyes of a righteous God. All humanity was doomed for hell and destruction and damnation because of what Adam did. The Bible says that all we like sheep have went astray. All of us have gone our own way. And the Lord had laid upon him the iniquity of us all. And we see in scripture how Adam fell. And right after him, Abraham fell. And Noah fell. And Solomon fell. And David fell. And, and Isaiah fell. And Isaac fell. And Elisha fell. And Jeremiah fell. And, and Nehemiah fell. And, and Daniel fell. And even David fell. And all these men and women of God, they all fail. But the good news is, in the fullness of time, God himself became a man. Because help was on the way. I want you to know that your help is on the way. This is why you cannot give up. This is why you cannot give in. This is why you cannot give out. This is why you have to continue to stand. You have to continue to believe. You have to continue to trust. You have to continue to pray. You have to continue to decree. You have to continue to declare. Why? Because your help is on the way. And you might be five minutes from your breakthrough. Don't you give up because help is on the way. Don't you go back because your help is on the way. It might not be there when you want it, but I'm telling you, it's on the way. Somebody give God praise for this. Help is on the way. I'm coming up out of this because I serve a God won't leave me the way that he found me. I'm coming up out of this because no weapon formed against me is going to prosper. I'm coming up out of this because I know the track record of my God and he's never left me nor has he forsaken me. I know his track record. I know he's good. I know he's faithful. I know he's kind. I know he's wonderful. I know he's awesome. And I know he loves me too much to leave me in this place. Help! He's on the way. You go in a courtroom. Help is on the way. I don't care what the doctor said. Help is on the way. Help is on the way. Help is on the way. Well, Pastor, I'm down. Pastor, I'm struggling. Help is on the way. Get that in your spirit. Stop lying. Stop complaining. Stop griping. Stop trying. Because we 
can lay in doors for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Help me, somebody. Help me, somebody. I don't care what the giant looks like. Help is on the way. I don't care what the trouble looks like. Help is on the way. I don't care what the x-ray looks like. Help is on the way. Help is on the way. The best, I ain't got no money. Help is on the way. I ain't got nowhere to live. Help is on the way. My car broke down. Help is on the way. My husband's acting crazy. Help is on the way. Help is on the way. Help is on the way. It's on the way. It's on the way. My son is on cocaine. Help is on the way. My daughter's a lesbian. Help is on the way. Do you believe that, church? Somebody put your hands together like you believe. Look at your neighbor and tell a public stomach. The Bible says that God is a, a present help in time. Sometimes the help is already here. It's not on the way. It's already here. We just got to learn to tap into it. We got a lot of rest in it. In other words, it's almost like back in the days to be a street fighter. And I remember one time there was about seven guys outside my house and we were talking junk. And I remember I know I couldn't get all of them. But I grabbed two, at least two of them, bite, kick, scratch, whatever, go to the ground with them and just hold it on. Glory. Don't look at me like that. Glory. I was out there. I told you when I got set, the crime rate fell. I think I'm joking. So, I want you to think about that. You're in a situation where your back is against the wall. You got nowhere to go and you ain't got no turn. You know where to turn. And you got seven things coming against you. It ain't time to panic. It ain't time to act crazy. It ain't time to get weary. It ain't time to faint. What you need to do is you need to pop your foot up on the wall behind you. And you need to say, bring it. Because help is on the way. Bring the trouble. Because help is on the way. Bring the enemy. Bring the enemy because help is on the way. Ah, I wish somebody would do this. Help is on the way. Help is on the way. Our government right now is doing all kinds of ungodly things. Our government is, is legalizing homosexual weddings and lesbian weddings. And, and our government is allowing abortions in our, in our nation, over 4,000 babies every single day are being killed on American soil through abortions. And, and all this stuff is going on in our nation. And, and ungodliness is on every side. Everywhere you turn, things are just... It seems like our nation is going in a downward spiral with lasciviousness and bondage and, and the rampage of pornography and the rampage of this and that. And just all kind of just evil spirits have been released, have been released and loosed on the land. But I'm telling you what today, Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, he may be also. He said, let not your heart be troubled. The Bible says, then we which are alive and remain shall be called together in the clouds with the Lord. So shall we ever be with them. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. What are you saying, Pastor? I'm saying, don't be discouraged. Help is on the way.